Okay, we're going to do related rates, which some people are a little intimidated by, but they're actually not that bad. Once you get the hang of it, they're all pretty much the same approach, even though the problems seem quite different. So the first example we have is a stone that's thrown into a pond causing ripple, ripples in the form of concentric circles to move away from the point of impact at a rate of 20 centimeters per second. We want to find two things, the rate of change of circumference and the rate of change of area with respect to time. And we want to do this when the radius is 50 centimeters. So step one is always to draw a picture. So we're going to draw a circle with a radius r. And let's look at what they're giving us. They're telling us that we're going to calculate rates of change when r is 50. So I like to write that in parentheses next to my variable. To remind me that r is a variable, it's not a constant, but at some point I'll be plugging in 50 for r after I differentiate with respect to time. The other number they gave us was the, uh, the circles are moving away from the point of impact at a rate of 20 centimeters per second. So that's telling me that the rate of change of the radius with respect to time is 20 centimeters per second. And what they want me to find, the first thing is the rate of change of circumference, and then the rate of change of area. Let's work at one at a time. Let's start with circumference. So what we need to do is we need to come up with an equation that relates our variables using circumference. Well, we all know c is equal to 2 pi r. So now let's differentiate everything with respect to time. The derivative of c with respect to time is dc dt. The derivative of 2 pi r is 2 pi times the derivative of r with respect to t. Now we can plug in our value for dr dt, which was 20, and we get dc dt equals 2 pi times 20. So dc dt equals 40 pi. And now what are the units? Well, the 20 was in centimeters per second. 2 pi was a constant. So that's going to be 40 pi centimeters per second. I don't like to plug in the units as I'm working through the problem. I keep track of them, though. And then at the end, if you just look at your rate, the rate of change of circumference, circumference for this problem will be in centimeters, and the time is in seconds. So usually at the end, you can figure out what they should be. Okay, so now let's do the derivative of area with respect to time. So we need an area function. First area is pi r squared. Once again, differentiate with respect to time. And you'll get dA dt. Now we're taking the derivative of r squared, so that's going to be 2 pi r times the derivative of r with respect to time. So in this equation, we have to substitute in two values. We have to plug in r. Well, that was given to us. They wanted to know this when r is 50. And then dr dt, which was 20. So we get dA dt equals 2 pi times 1,000, so 2,000 pi. Or the decimal equivalent. And now what are the units on this? Well, if we just think about area, the area is going to be in square centimeters, and time is in seconds. If you go back and look at it, the 50 was centimeters, the 20 was centimeters per second, so we would have centimeters times centimeters per second, which gives you your square centimeters per second. Also notice both of these rates are positive in this problem. The circles are getting bigger, so you should get positive rates of change. All right, let's look at another example. We have a four-meter ladder standing up against a wall. 
the foot of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a constant rate of 0.75 meters per second. How fast is the top of the ladder coming down the wall at the instant it is one meter above the ground? Give answer approximate to three significant figures. So first, I guess we need to draw our picture. So we have our wall and the ground. And we have our ladder. Now, the ladder is not changing lengths. So the ladder is 4 meters. So that's a constant. So we're not going to use a variable there. But we will need a variable for the horizontal and the vertical. Because that is changing. The horizontal is getting bigger as the ladder is getting pulled away at the bottom. And the vertical is getting smaller. Now we're getting a rate of 0.75 meters per second. That's in the horizontal, so that's dx dt. I'll write it as 3 fourths, and that's meters per second. How fast is the top of the ladder coming down? That's what we're trying to find. So that would be dy dt. At the instant that it's 1 meter above the ground, that's going to be the value of y when I'm ready to plug in my values. Now we don't have a value for x, but we can figure that out from the Pythagorean theorem. So with 4 as the hypotenuse and one leg is 1, the other leg will be the square root of 16 minus 1, square root of 15. So that's going to be the value for x. So sometimes you need to do those side calculations to get some values for the other variables if they're not given. All right, so we're ready to go. So we're trying to find dy dt, so I need an equation related to this picture. And obviously the Pythagorean theorem comes to mind. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 4 squared. Let's differentiate everything with respect to time. The derivative of x squared would be 2x times dx dt. And y squared would be 2y times dy dt. And where a mis common mistake is made, don't forget the constant, the derivative of a constant is 0. Now, if you like, we could divide both sides of the equation by 2, and we'd still have equal 0, just to simplify a little. Now, let's plug in everything we know. We know x, that's the square root of 15. dx dt, that was given to us, that's 3 fourths. y is equal to 1. And dy dt, well, that's what we're trying to find. So, solving for dy dt, we get dy dt equals 3 root 15 over 4. And let's think about our units. The y, the vertical, was in meters, and our time was in seconds. And this did say, say to three significant figures. So we grab the calculator and we punch in 3 square root 15 divided by 4. And you should get uh, 2.90. So approximately 2.90 meters per second. All right, let's stick with this example and let's ask another question. How fast is the angle between the ladder and the ground changing when the top of the ladder is 2 meters off the ground? So, same setup. Ladder is a constant 4 meters. We use x for our horizontal, y for the vertical. The ladder is being pulled out that way, so we have a dx dt equal to 3 fourths meters per second. They want to know when y is equal to 2, when the top of the ladder is 2 meters off the ground. Once again, let's solve for x. In the Pythagorean theorem, 4 squared minus 2 squared would be square root of 12. I'm just going to leave it as square root of 12, because I foresee what's coming down the line in our equation. And what they want us to find is how fast this angle is changing. So let's call that angle theta. And we need to write an equation for that. So it wants to know how fast 
theta is changing with respect to time. Okay, so let's come up with an equation for this. Uh, there's several we can use, right triangle trig, sine or cosine or tangent. I think I'd like to use the cosine. Cosine of theta would be x over 4, adjacent over hypotenuse, except I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as arc cosine of x over 4 for reasons that may be become apparent in a minute. Let's differentiate now with respect to time. The derivative of theta is d theta dt. The derivative of arc cosine, if you can remember that one, it's negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus the argument squared. We have a chain rule involved here, so now we have to multiply that by the derivative of x over 4, which is 1 fourth times the derivative of x with respect to time. So we do have a value we can plug in for x, that's the square root of 12. The reason I didn't leave it as cosine theta equals x over 4, I could have, I'll get the same answer. When you differentiate that, you'll get negative sine theta d theta d dt. Then you'll have to go back in from your picture and figure out what's the sine of theta. And so like I said, you will get the same answer. I just decided to use arc cosine because it's not used very often and I know it's lonely. So we've got d theta dt. And we have negative 1 over square root 1 minus. Now we're going to plug in the square root of 12 for x. Remember we're squaring that. It's still inside the square root. Times 1 fourth dx dt. All right, so let's simplify. We're going to get a negative 1. Now with the square root, when we square that, it's going to be 12 over 16. And I'll just write that out. So we have 4 here, square root 1 minus 12 over 16 dx dt. Keep going. So d theta dt. Uh, 16 over 16 minus 12 over 16, so that'll give you inside your radical 4 over 16, which are nice numbers to take the square root of. So that would give you 2 over 4. So we're going to have negative 1 over uh, 4 times 1 half would be 2. And I still haven't plugged in my 3 fourths for dx dt. So let me plug that in. Should have plugged it in a long time ago. So finally, we get d theta dt equals negative 3 eighths. And now, what are the units on this one? Well, theta should be in radians. And time, if we go back up, our time was in seconds. So radians per second, or the decimal equivalent to that. And once again, go back and think about that. Theta is getting smaller. So as the ladder is being pulled away, x is increasing, so its derivative is positive. y is decreasing, its derivative is negative. Theta is also decreasing, so its derivative should be negative as well. Okay, let's look at one last example. We have a conical tank. The radius at the top is 4 and the height is 8 meters. It's being filled with water at a rate of 2 cubic meters per minute. That's a rate referring to volume. So let's write that right off the bat. The rate of change of volume. And the volume is increasing, so it's a positive 2 cubic meters per minute. How fast is the water level rising when it's 5 meters high? So we're going to need a variable 
for that, we'll call that h, the height of the water at any given time. And the radius is changing also at any given time. And we want to know when we plug in 5 for h. And so how fast is the water level rising? We want to know the rate of change of h with respect to time. So ready to go. Let's write a volume equation. Move this out of the way a little bit. All right, so what was the volume of a cone? Think back, geometry class. One third area of the base times the height. Now I'm thinking a few steps ahead, and I'm going to differentiate with respect to time, but I don't even have a value for r nor a value for dr dt. So this is one of those examples where you need to do a little bit extra side work. So let's go back and look at the picture for a minute. Is there some relationship, some equation I can write using R that will help me eliminate R in my volume equation? Well, it looks like I have similar triangles here. And so H over R should equal 8 over 4. So we can cross multiply. And I'm going to get r is equal to h over 2. That's perfect because now I can replace r in my volume equation with h over 2. So I'll get pi over 12 h to the third. Okay, so let's differentiate with respect to time. dB dt. Okay, so that's going to give me pi over 4 h squared times the derivative of h with respect to time. Let's plug in some numbers. We don't know dh dt, but we do know dV dt is 2. And h is 5. So we can solve for dh dt. So that'll be 25 pi over 4. So when I divide that, I'm going to multiply by 4 over 25 pi. So I get 8 over 25 pi. I have to put some units in. Equals dh dt. So let's think. h was measured in meters. And time was in minutes. So that'll be meters per minute. And the decimal equivalent, we grab our calculator and check. Make sure you divide by the 25 and the pi. 0 0.102 approximately. Meters per minute. And it makes sense that dH dt should be positive because H is increasing as the water is being filled into the cone. So to summarize, in general, how do we approach related rates problems? First thing you do is draw a diagram. Then you label with variables and constants and identify any rates of change that are given and what rates of change are needed. Then looking at all your variables, write an equation relating those variables. Differentiate the equation with respect to time. Plug in all the known values and solve for your required rate of change. And as in the last example, occasionally you might have to do a side equation to help with some of the variables whose values are not given to you. Hopefully this helps.